Hello, and thank you so much for tuning in to our fall Community Advisory Council meeting. I am Dr. Kimberly Mayfield, and I'm the Dean of the School of Education at Holy Names University. And hello, everyone. My name is Brad Henry, and I am the Operations Coordinator for the School of Education. So we are starting this academic year with a bit of sad news. On September 25th, 2021, our beloved professor and colleague, Dr. Zaida McCall Perez, peacefully passed away after a short illness. Dr. McCall Perez started her journey at Holy Names University in 2006, and she was enjoying a much deserved and well-earned sabbatical this fall. Her areas of expertise were bilingual education and special education. She will be sorely missed, but her legacy will live on in our commitment to English language learners and training teachers to meet their needs. There is a program that is incubating that may be a place where early childhood educators at Merritt College who have Spanish as their first language can easily matriculate and transfer into Holy Names University into the liberal studies program and become TK teachers. So stay tuned for the development of what we are preliminarily calling the McCall Perez Bridge Program for Early Childhood Educators. We held a memorial on campus to honor Dr. McCall Perez's memory on October 7th, and we were very fortunate to have her son Peter in attendance, as well as Professor Emerita, Dr. Thea Maestri, and a much beloved clinical faculty member, Norma Murphy. So the School of Education has been very, very busy since school ended in the spring of 2021. On June 6th, on June 5th and 6th, we held a graduation ceremony for the first cohort of the Healthy Engagement Legacy and Learning Academy, which is a partnership between Lincoln Families Foundation, Alameda First Five, Alameda County First Five, and Holy Names University. On this slide, you see uh, Brad Henry, Kim Bowers, who is our interim provost and vice president for academic affairs and yours truly, and our Holy Names alumna who, it, who serves District 3 as their council member, Carol Fife, And we were celebrating the Healthy Engagement Legacy and Learning Academy graduates. Next, we had a candidate forum for Assembly District 18, which was vacated by Rob Bonta. And um, we had a lively conversation with all of the candidates who were running to fill that office. As we now know, um, that initial race led to a runoff between Janani Rakmachandran and Mia Banta, and Mia Banta um, was declared the winner of that race in August. And as soon as Governor Gavin Newsom signed the TK-12 trailer bill, Assembly 130, we sent information out to our candidates to update them on new ways they could satisfy the basic skills requirement and subject matter competency requirements for teacher candidates. This, I would say, was the best attended virtual meeting that we had with our students. 
about 55 people RSVP'd and 55 people attended. The great news about the trailer bill is that candidates are now able to use coursework to satisfy the three areas that are assessed by CBEST. And there's more information forthcoming about how candidates can use courses to satisfy subject matter competency. We began the academic year um, in August with an evening with Arthur McFarlane II, who is the great grandson of W.E.B. Du Bois. We had a lively, informative, energizing, confirming meeting with Arthur, and we are planning to have him come back before this academic year is over to share more information with us about the life and times of his famous ancestor. So the first town hall we had regarding the trailer bill was for our Holy Names University students and community. And on September 1st, we held an event for the Oakland community where we shared with them the information about how they can now use coursework to satisfy the requirement of the basic skills, which we know as CBEST, and then the upcoming information about how to use courses to satisfy subject matter competency, which is currently satisfied by CSET. And um, due to popular demand, we held our second annual national conference for parents and teachers as education co-navigators on October 9th. Our theme this year was addressing learning loss and the importance of daily attendance. We had a series of very informative, engaging conversations with education leaders, some Oakland principals and a principal from a private school in San Francisco, um, teachers who are now administrators and the leader of a community-based organization, Oakland Natives Give Back, that incentivize education, that incentivize daily attendance so that students can maximize on their education journey. We also had grade level breakouts that we structured in grade level bands this year. So we had a breakout for elementary school and one for middle and high school. And a bit of exciting news that I'd love to share about myself. Um, on June 1st, I was given a promotion and now I hold a vice presidency, which is of external relations and strategic partnerships. So in addition to being the Dean of the School of Education, I am also the vice president of external relations and strategic partnerships. This summer, we rolled out our Confronting Racism Certificate. This was the maiden voyage of the Confronting Racism Certificate. There were four classes um, to set the historical context of race in the United States. And the participants of the Confronting Racism Certificate attended those classes. They also attended a class on how to tell their story. And the final piece of the certificate will be that the participants are placed in a community-based organization that is led by people of color. And in that way, we will be able to determine if they have grown in their knowledge and understanding around racism and if they will be incorporating some of their learnings into their work environment. I am absolutely delighted to share that after a long and rigorous search process, 
we have found what we like to believe the forever executive director for Raskob Day School. We are pleased that Hillary Christinger has joined the Holy Names family and the Raskob community as executive director. Hillary has over 40 years of experience in education. She came to Holy Names um, from being the director of special ed for the Piedmont Unified School District. She's worked extensively throughout the Bay Area, not only in school districts, but also at the county level. And we are just excited about her being with us and welcome her with open arms. I would also like to share that we have been fortunate to um, get Dr. Jennifer Obida to work with us for this year. She is a faculty member, but she is also serving as our assessment coordinator. And this is very important because we are preparing now for the Commission on Teacher Credentialing site visit that will happen in the 2023-24 year. We are doing deep preparation now. We are setting policies and procedures in place. We are looking for documents and evidence, and we're taking a closer look at how we not only meet student needs, but propel them to be the very best educators they can be and to find evidence that that is exactly what we're doing as it is relating to the teacher performance expectations. Well, I told you just a few slides ago that I now have a VP title that I hold, um, and that is to develop external relationships and strategic partnerships. And so I am happy to announce that we have a partnership with Five Keys Charter Schools. They provide academic support and teaching to students who are um, tied up in the correction uh, system. So they work in jails and uh, juvenile detention centers. And we believe the mission of their work is closely aligned with the mission of Holy Names to serve uh, people who are underserved. So, one additional change that we have encountered this year is that we have moved institutionally from four schools to three schools. So we used to have the School of Nursing, the School of Business and Applied Social Sciences, the School of Liberal Arts, and the School of Education. We now have the School of Health and Applied Sciences, business and applied social science and education, which will go through a name change. And I predict that it will become the School of Education and Liberal Arts. So what that means empirically is that we have new faculty, about six of them who've joined the School of Education and Liberal Arts. And we now have some additional programs. So we have always had the liberal studies program, which is our undergrad program. Most liberal studies candidates want to become elementary school teachers. We now have interdisciplinary studies, and we also have the ethnic studies major in the School of Education. We have some arts classes, some multimedia classes, so we're really rounding out with, um, with the arts writ large and we really welcome them and we're glad that our school is expanding. I said at the beginning that I'm really glad that you've tuned in. And one of the reasons is because we need your help. We need candidate supervisors. We need holy names, university supervisors. The perfect supervisor is a retired educator, classroom teacher, or site principal who wants to give back to the profession, 
but doesn't want to be in schools all day, every day. We need university supervisors to supervise our candidates. We have three credential programs, multiple subject, single subject, and a mild moderate program. We have a very acute need for special education supervisors. So if you know anyone who is retired or is just not in the classroom all day, but with a special education background for mild moderate, we need them desperately, please send them our way. And um, additionally, multiple subject or single subject. So please send us anyone you think who would be interested in supervising. Um, you know our candidates are amazing. On this slide, we have featured Ann Park, who is a former Oakland Unified School District Teacher of the Year. Um, we provide deep support to our candidates. They know a HNU candidate at the school site because of the deep level of support that we provide. So once again, before Brad changes the slide, please, please help us out. Please send us anyone that you think would be a great university supervisor for our Holy Names University candidates. And many of you know that we have provided training in the Orton-Gillingham approach. Um, we are doing it again. It will be virtual. The dates are in February and March of 2022. The cost is, is $970. And if, if a person who is doing the training would like to receive continuing education units, they may do that for an additional cost of $120 per unit for three units of CEUs. So if you are interested or you know anyone who is interested, please have them sign up right away because our trainings usually fill up and we often have waiting lists. So if you know anyone who's interested, please have them reach out to the information on this flyer, it's Polly Mayer at mayer, M-A-Y-E-R, at hnu.edu or leave her a message at 510-436-1058. That is our Wharton Gillingham Approach Classroom Educator Training for the spring semester. I did just want to add, Dr. Mayfield, that we will also be sending this flyer along with a registration form out to all of our community members who uh, may be viewing this uh, event right now. So we'll get that out to them via email. Excellent. And lastly, I would like to share that on December 15th, we will have a development day for Holy Names University faculty and staff. This will be a full day of training on what each department at the university does and how they work within the university um, overall and uh, comprehensively. So myself and uh, Brad Henry and Narali Johnny are doing a sin significant portion of the coordinating and planning for the day. We are taking the next step to really understand how our university works and how each department within the university works. So that will be on December 15th. And we haven't yet determined whether it will be virtual or whether it will be on campus. So that really does conclude the updates for the School of Education. If you have any information to share with us, um, please feel free to email myself at mayfield at hnu.edu or Brad Henry at henry at hnu.edu. Um, in closing, I'd like to share with you that we now have our second cohort of Batty 
candidates, the Bay Area Teacher Training Institute that we are in partnership with. So we're excited about that. I think we have between 30 and 32 BATI candidates. Our enrollment is robust. We have about 191 candidates receiving credentials or master's degrees or certificates within the School of Education. I am going to share with you, because if I say it, it can, it can come true. I can plant the seed. I would like to see us get to 250 uh, candidates enrolled, and we need your help to do that. So if you know anyone who is looking for a home to receive their credential in multiple subjects, single subjects, or ed specialist mild moderate, bilingual authorization for Spanish, a master's degree in urban ed or a master's of arts degree or a master of a therapy degree, please send them our way. There will be some upcoming information about price resetting for graduate units. So please stay plugged in to um, Holy Names University. That information will be coming out um, shortly, but we are really looking hard at how to make our program affordable and competitive. And I think you'll all be pleased with the information forthcoming. So thank you so much for coming to this Community Advisory Council meeting. We decided to utilize all the technology we have available to us in the 21st century. We'd love to hear your feedback and we will see you virtually in 2022 for our spring Community Advisory Council meeting. Have a great evening and thank you again for coming.